And we have Kyle Christensen, the VP of Marketing at Zura. Right, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Sam Sita. It's a, it's a real honor to be up here on behalf of Zora, and particularly in context of all the amazing companies we saw earlier. Really, really inspirational stuff. So I'm, I'm honored to be up here. Um, who's who's Zora? So we are an enterprise software company. We were founded a little more than a decade ago, right here in San Mateo County, by three guys in a tiny little office in Redwood Shores. And a lot has changed for us in the past ten years. We were fortunate enough to go public on the New York Stock Exchange last year. We've grown to where we've got over 1,000 employees. We've got 1,000 customers in over 26 countries. Uh, but one thing that hasn't changed is headquarters is still right here, right across the freeway in San Mateo. We don't have you know, a sprawling Emerald City-like campus with their own man-made lake in front, but <laughs> we're working on it. So <laughs> to our good friends at Oracle, thanks for hosting, but we're gunning for it. Uh, Give us 10 more years, maybe. We'll get there. Um, so what do we do? Uh, Zawara, oops. When you look at the world. Jump the gun on my video. So, so Zawara, uh, the practical story of what we do, we are a subscription management company. So we help anybody with a recurring revenue business model, a subscription business model, launch those businesses, scale those businesses, automate those businesses. Uh, so things like billing operations, payment operations, revenue recognition, a lot of practical stuff like that. I, I think what's... Less interesting is not exactly what we do, but, but why we do it and why it's relevant in today's day and age. And so with that, let me get back to my video. I think it tells a great story about what this is all about. When you look at the world, what do you see? People or things? Tools or activities? Products or customers? For a long time, the world's businesses had just one perspective. They saw the products, not the people. They were in the business of selling things. So that's what they did. Businesses sold and customers bought. You might call this the era of ownership. Businesses knew they had customers. They saw them every day. But they didn't really know their customers. And so they focused more on what they could sell them than what they wanted. And that was fine until the thing you bought broke, sat idle, couldn't expand, or became obsolete. And then you had to buy a new one. And that was not what the customer wanted. And that's just sad. But here's the good news. There are a few companies that have had the courage to see the world in a new way. Mavericks, disruptors, reinventors, call them what you will. In just 10 short years, they have changed the way we all see the world. There's the automotive company in Detroit that when it looks at highways, no longer sees vehicles, it sees travelers. Ford, after 115 years and 380 million cars, it's hard to imagine this company changing the way it does business. But that's exactly what's happening. Or the world's leading construction and equipment manufacturer, Caterpillar, a company that no longer sees gigantic earth movers, but customers who need to move earth. Or how about the 70-year-old company known for crafting the most popular guitars in the world that no longer sees instruments, but people who want to be musicians? That's what's happening at Fender. And these are just three examples. There are many more. Surf Air, who sees passengers instead of jets. The Guardian, who sees open minds rather than open newspapers. Serve Corp, who sees the work, not the place. Hive, who sees smart people instead of smart homes. And Royal Canin, who sees pets instead of pet food. Companies that have the vision to look at the world in a new way, seeing people, not purchases, delivering outcomes not products. And this is changing the world for the better. You could call this the end of ownership and the rise of usership. We call it the subscription economy. So now, when you look at the world, what will you see? So that is what's happening out there. And we heard Let's see, can I get this to advance? Well, oop, there we go. Um, 
we heard a little bit of this on stage from our first presenter, right, talking about companies like Peloton who aren't selling bikes, they're selling exercise as a service. Uh, other examples that we saw in the video, we call it the subscription economy. And we believe this is actually one of the biggest shifts in the underlying economic model, not just the United States, but in the globe that we've seen in a generation, if not 100 years or more. The shift from a manufacturing age where we're largely focused on rolling off new products off an assembly line to an age where we're delivering services and outcomes to, co to consumers. And so what I want to do is talk less about Zora and exactly what our software does and just more examples that I think are really compelling. Because I think right away when we hear this, we think, oh, software is a service. Of course, you know, those companies are doing those things. Or we think digital media, right? We think, got it, Netflix, I got it. But the really interesting stories are in some of the manufacturing companies, transportation companies that are starting to innovate in this way. So um, one of my favorite examples is Fender. Any guitar players in the room? Handful? So Fender, 70-year-old company, right? You, you'd look at them and you go, historically, they probably measure the success of their business by how many guitars they produced and sold every year. They're kind of going through this transformation in the subscription economy where they go, look, we're not a guitar manufacturer. We are a company whose job it is to produce musicians, right? And so what's their challenge? Well, what happens is, you, you tell you know, your, your, your spouse, hey, honey, I really want to get into playing guitar. Get me one for my birthday. You know, they do, and you get it home, and you play it for like a month, and then you, know, you get busy, and you stick it in the corner. It starts to collect dust, right? And then three years later, you're selling at a garage sale, right? And that's what happens. And so to sell, you know, to grow, Fender's got to produce more and more guitars. What they realize is, what they've learned is there's a six month window, this magic six months, where if you just stick to it for six months, you will likely be a guitar player for life. And if you're a guitar player for life, you'll likely come back and buy another guitar in a few years and another guitar and another guitar. And they've realized, look, if we could just make this happen, we could be two or three times the size of the company we are today just by getting through that, that hurdle. And so what they've done is they launched this app called Fender Play, which basically comes with a guitar. You log in, and they have professional musicians who get there and, and teach you how to play the guitar every step of the way for six months. And they're seeing people stick as customers, right? And they're, and they're delivering musician as a service, right, as opposed to just a guitar. So that's a great example. Um, we'll skip HBO. Let's go to Ford, right, another one. Ford is particularly interesting. I mean, these guys invented the assembly line, right? The original assembly line, the, you know, was it 1918, I forget the year, the original Model T. Um, listen to that, contrasted with how their CEO describes them in the year 2018, 2019. He says, Ford is not a manufacturing company anymore. We are a transportation company. They're moving from a world where they're going to grow by rolling more cars off the assembly line to a world where you buy a car. With the car comes a new app called the Ford Pass that, of course, you can control everything that's happening on your car, right? And Ford gets that data so they can make better cars. But you can also use it to where you drive your car into the city, you park at the parking garage, you unlock a Ford Go Bike, and you ride that Go Bike a few blocks to get to your meeting. You ride it back, you know, you unlock it and back in your car. You then maybe think about, hey, I want to go skiing this weekend up in Tahoe, but the car I have is a convertible. So in the future, I could take my Ford Pass and unlock a subscription to a, you know, a Ford Explorer to take me up to the mountains on the weekend. And that's how Ford's thinking about their business in the future, is this lifetime relationship with a customer through subscriptions and services, as opposed to manufacturing more things. Um, the last example I'll hit is Caterpillar. Uh, these things are crazy. I don't know if you've ever seen one of the, how, how large some of these big Caterpillar tractors are. I mean, they're massive, and they cost tens and tens of millions of dollars. And, you know, I know if there's any developers in the room, you know, you think about, I've got a big construction project to roll out. You don't want to own one of these massive things, right? That's not your goal. Your goal is to move a metric ton of dirt from point A to point B, and that's all you're really trying to get done. And so Caterpillar is embracing this, and they're saying, got it, this should be our business. Why not, instead of trying to sell these things at $10 million a pop, let me create a fleet of autonomous, self-driving dirt movers. Let me couple that with sensors and special vests that go on top of the humans that are down there working with the tractors. Let me throw some drones up in the air with sensors on them and beam data back and forth between all these things so I can optimize the efficiency of the whole construction site. And let me sell that. Let me sell that service so I can you know, move three tons of dirt much faster than I could you know, in years past. And that's the future of Caterpillar. Right? So reinventing themselves from a tractor manufacturer to become you know, dirt moving as a service. And you can apply this to, to virtually any industry. Um, the really cool thing is, you know, this is not all just, you know, this is about business, right? 
we, we study the results of these companies and what we found is that companies with a subscription business model actually grow upwards of five to nine times faster than the S&P 500. Right? That's why you see most of the companies who are innovating today, it's either strictly a service or it's hardware plus a service. It's really what Zwar is all about. We're about enabling companies to embrace this new operating model. Um, there's a bunch of things you have to re-architect in your business from the metrics you use to the processes that you run with, away from a model of, that's product-centric and towards a model that's subscriber-centric, and, uh, and that's what we help enable. So if this is interesting at all to you, um, you know, we don't just sell the software, but our CEO and founder wrote a book about it. It's a bestseller right now. Uh, if you want to read more, it's a great read. Shoot me an email. I'm Kyle at Zora, and uh, we'll ship you out a book. So that's Zora.